now 6.30. I will be calling this meeting to the order, so if you could please join me in standing. Obviously, 
there's nothing left. So the good thing is more jobs, more tax revenue, but we'll have to make a small adjustment there for revenue of 25,000. Are there any other questions? If not, I will entertain a motion that we approve the sale of uh, the final lot and just forward it on to a town meeting for uh, 26 Tuesday. I saw more. I'll second. Right, we have a motion on the table. Does anybody have any other questions before we proceed? If not, all those in favor of approving the sale and sending it on to the town meeting on April 26, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. At this time, we're going to begin our uh, department presentations. Now, not having the opportunity to meet each one of you personally, uh, what I would appreciate is that when I call out your department, if you could come to the mic and introduce yourself, uh, and uh, just give us a brief synopsis of what your budget is. There may be a couple of questions for each one of you. You may not have any questions, uh, but what we're here to do is to just to for no, for no other reason, just to put names with faces and to see what your what your department is all about. Uh, I believe that uh, an agenda was sent out so that you would know the order in which you were going to appear. The other thing I would say is that if you don't want to stay for the whole thing, when you're done, you may you may go. But if you may want to stick around and ask questions at at, at the end of the uh, total presentation. So at this time. I would like to welcome to the mic, uh, Economic Development. Good evening, Mary Ann Chinati, Town Planner, Economic Development Coordinator. If I might ask, okay. I'm also number 10, so okay. maybe could we address both at once? Uh, okay. Um, the only increase in the Economic Development line item is for the salary. Uh, standard 3% that the uh, first selectman has proposed. Mm -hmm. And planning and zoning, the only changes other than salary are uh, mapping and wide, uh, wide scanner copier. That's been reduced by $685. There is a, um, an addition for GIS hosting of $16,700. subdivision gets approved to be to allow the town to be able to input that subdivision without having to hold off and submit on a semi-annual basis to the current um, contractor. In addition, with the current um, firm, we, we don't have the ability to create presentation maps to edit, not on a permanent basis, not to affect the actual layer, but to create presentation maps, um, outlining things, making call-outs and whatnot. We have to do it by hand, and that was very unprofessional. Um, we were we met with the first selectman this morning, and we're looking at possibly coordinating with, um, in addition to the assessor who has the contract with the company, with uh, the sewer department. And we're going to be meeting on that at uh, the end of the month. So this may not stay in, in the uh, planning department line. And the 167, if it does, that's only for the first year okay. because it includes uh, training for department employees to be able to, to do the GIS manipulations. Um, after this year, it will go to a maximum of 11,700, and that's on the high side because that also includes $6,000 capped technical support if we need it for the following fiscal years. And we also have in the planning department an engineer line item. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, I will let the first selectman speak to that. Okay. GIS, it may be possible so that the uh, sewer department will actually take on those funding for that. So that's why we're still to talk about that as to what we might do that best course of action. Uh, we'll get back to you with what we actually decide.
side. Uh, the, uh, we're looking for a uh, additional line here because we are looking to do more work within house. Um, you'll notice that there's two things. If you take a look on the very last page of your budget, is uh, talking about where the balances are coming in. Um, there's a lot of work being done. This towards the bottom of that list, you should see that there's three things: Shepherd Hill sidewalks, Lakeland Road sidewalks, Down Road Bridge. Uh, we need help and assistance with uh, that pro those projects. Um, this particular uh, person would be coming in doing things that we normally would have to subcontract out, such as uh, sight lines for driveways, working with when a uh, developer comes in with plans, to be able to review the plans in house and then not have to expend money uh, filling out to the uh, developer to say, here's your cost again. Um, so that's one of the things we're looking to do. And if they can do some of the work that we have with those three projects, great. If not, we may be still be working with uh, Chuck Eaton to do continue our prog uh, progress with those two projects. That's why it's sent back in the back of that um, uh, budget line item. Do you anticipate having an in-house engineer be a potential source of revenue? Not really. That's just the person who will be stopping some of the billing going out right now. Um, a source of revenue, I don't see that as a term.
468 for Shepherd Hill, what's that? Is that for the engineering? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's three phases of that. That's phase one. Yeah. And it's basically you'll note that it's in there for that in that area. Because we didn't want these projects to go away. We wanted to make sure we were funding them. That's why the engineering fees are in there. I mean, I can see if the balance and the grant is already approved, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have a problem. Right now, I'm a little hesitant about the 46. Which one is the, not approved? The, the oh, three they're all, they're all yeah, they're approved. all approved. Well, I, just, I asked you, this, this one here is just for late up road. Right, but there's two other papers. I mean, there's... It's, 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 it's approved? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, can I get a copy of that one? Sure. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I would uh, appreciate it if our grant writer would come back to the mic and give us an opportunity, give himself an opportunity to tell us a little bit about what he does. My name is Stuart Watkins. I've been with the town for just over a year now. Um, at that time, we've gotten roughly $325,000 worth of grants, most of which are um, first time uh, app. We do this first time we had applied. Um, some of the larger ones include. Mark and I, the recreation director, we got $100,000 to um, increase the summer camp. Um, so it was an innovation grant. Um, Mark can speak to this more, but I guess in previous years there have been probably 20 to 30 different students this year. There was over 150 that attended the summer camp. We also got uh, about $75,000 for a new senior van. It's going to take about a year for it to arrive, but um, when it does come, it's going to be a great asset. It's brand new, uh, custom built, so that's going to be great. Um, I've been working with the police department. We just got $34,000 to do some policy updates, which is particularly important given the last three years. And um, we're also going to get some new helmets for the officers. Uh, and then, uh, again, with the rec department. Just in the rec department alone, we've got about $200,000 to increase programming um, and things like that. Aside from that, I also assist with um, maintaining the economic development website and help for the town. Uh, Facebook, um, I help digitize all of the ordinances and a little bit here and there. So I do the grant writing, but then also um, try and help out any way I can. So, yeah. Any questions? Are you getting any sleep at night? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I know you have how old are you? Three months. Three months. Thank you. Thank you. Um, animal Patrol. Hello, I'm Karen Stone, the Animal Patrol Officer. Um, on my budget this year, the line item for salaries is contractual, and the only other difference is a $300 addition to the line item for veterinary. Um, I do have one question. Last year's budget for expenses is advisors, same as this year's. Do you, do you have any type of variation at all? I mean, um, not really. Um, it, we've been getting a lot of donations for dog food, so it kind of keeps the line item down there. Um, veterinary fees, even sometimes we get donations if we have a big issue. So a lot of the supplies is just lumped into that one line item. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? You should be, you should be covered with the, the fuel for the vehicle, the way the prices are. Yeah, it should be. Four employees, they're all part-time, 
three of them are paid at minimum wage. Minimum wage went up to $13 on August 1st, and it's going up again on July 1st of this year with the $14. Um, uh, expenses are going up, like everyone's on fuel, electricity, insurance costs, and accounting and legal. But I think we do a good job of what we have. And we are also working with Jordan here on grants. He's a big help for us. Now, are you, um, I know there was a conversation a while ago about the foundation or the building structure. Right, and that's what we're working on on one of the grants. Yeah. I believe you're in good hands. I, I think so. <laughs> are there any other questions? Uh, yes. You work with the senior department. <laughs> <laughs> you work with the senior department uh, library. Yes, we do. We deliver books um, to, to the senior oh, center yeah. and to different people. Sometimes a lot of people will call us and say, "I can't get out. You have this book. Can you bring it?" We do that. So if you want a book, happy. You can go get it yourself. I'm bring that. I'm sorry, I had hip surgery. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, fire Marshal. How you guys doing? Uh, Dino Velasco, I just recently started, well not recently, I'm almost a year here with the town uh, as fire marshal and emergency management director. Um, if you don't know what I do, fire department goes out for fires, they call me to investigate them, cause an origin. Um, I, invest, I inspect all buildings for Connecticut um, General Statutes 29-305 to Connecticut Fire Safety Code and any NFPA regulations that are required that the state adopts. Um, my budget is pretty straightforward, there's really not too much to it. Uh, there is a new line item that I've added this year. Uh, that is for the EOC. We never really had one for the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, during one of our storms, there's a lot of times there. The Emergency Operations Center, it's at Central Village Fire Department. Uh, so during one of our storms, first lightning was there with me. Park um, was there as well. Um, we had a little, little bit of issues with some equipment. Um, the computer there is outdated. So the money that's in that budget will help with getting some new equipment up there. And, Now, when they hired you, did they tell you this was going to be part of your job, too? What's that? Standing up here in front of everybody? No, it's, it's I do the same thing in the town talks, but it's not fun. So, the EOC equipment, what exactly is that? So, this year, our goal would be to purchase a new computer. Okay. The one that's there, I, I couldn't tell you the exact So, I pretty much designated <laughs> for the new computer? For the new computer, and hopefully there's money left over that I can uh, get myself a tablet. Okay. Both for fire investigation and uh, emergency management things. It'll be a little functional. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Registrar's right office.
Uh, there may be somebody in the audience that doesn't know exactly what, what you need. There may be newer members in town or on the board, and also people that are not able to attend are going to be, have the opportunity to view it later. The state mandates that all the scanners are maintained every year. We did get a notice that that fee is going up. Okay. So we do that prior to the election, you know, once a year. We have to pay for the memory cards that, are, that go in each scanner for each election. For each election. Because um, we have to have those programs. We also have to pay for the ballots. And we have, you have to order so many ballots. Or you, if we don't order enough ballots, we, the town will have to pay a fine. So we always make sure we have more than enough ballots. Any other questions? Yes, supplies just went up $1,000. I mean, that's the only difference, really. Yeah. Except for the 3%. Okay. Tax collector. Everybody's favorite person. Yep. There's nobody. Harry. <laughs> um, I really don't go too much. The uh, salaries are going to be our contracts. Besides my stuff, I can do it. And profits went down a little bit because Karma is it Karma? Yep. And CCM um, gives us free training, so I can lower it a little bit. So besides that, the expenses, um, the cost of printing went up. And that's printing on my bills. That's basically it. And right now my collection rate when we get the refund of that is 98%. The biggest, the biggest question on the that is important. And that's and the March 1st. And that's what I have been steady for the last couple of years, hasn't right. it? Yeah, if not a little higher. Because no. that's as of March 1st, that's the end of that yeah. work. And what, compared to other municipalities, where do you think that ranks? Yeah. So I'm the best. <laughs> that's what she just we told me. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've been told that that type of collection rate is really outstanding, so that's a tribute to the I people in town. That and a lot, um, ever since we started doing tax sales, too, mm -hmm. you know, it, we're not letting it go further anymore. It's just going more off the paper. And your collection rate, you include the liquid? That's not including my bill, it's right there. No, that's just. The liquid is in addition to the That's correct. Do we have any tax sales in the plan? Yes. Um, well, um, I take that back. I was supposed to get going in April, but because of our computer stuff, we're probably not going to be sent off till May. So it's usually six months from May that we'll have to tax it. Any other questions? Thank you, Mary John. Building inspector. Building official. If, uh, look at my report, it really didn't change too much. Um, the biggest thing was uh, uh, vehicle expenses, all uh, because we have to buy uh, tires and do a great job on the vehicle this year. Um, then the other thing was uh, uh, supplies and expenses. It's just that uh, this coming year, uh, the change in all the uh, our code books, there, when the new versions come out, and uh, we have 11 different code books. So that's that's our main expense, and that's not one that we can even think about changing. So that's where that, that amount of money is coming. Um, other than that, that's about it. Uh, last year, we bought we our our department brought in five hundred four thousand nine hundred and sixty nine dollars in permit fees. I know one of them was because of having the uh, Amazon coming to the area, but uh, we're still ahead of. Uh, of last year's amount, not even counting that amount. So we're, we're a pretty sufficient uh, department. Any questions? Do you have to uh, go to classes mm -hmm. to upgrade periodically? Yeah, we actually have uh, 30 hours of classes we have to take a year. Uh, so, uh, like, I was actually in class this morning, uh, actually uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week. We have to, uh, we have to do 90 hours within a three year period. So we try to do about 30 hours a year. Where do you have to go for that? 
I actually did a virtual right now before we used to have to go to a place in uh, uh, Yale School. No, but I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank you for your prompt service a couple of years ago when that tree punctured my roof. Oh, that was awesome. Uh, that was me. <laughs> that expedited a lot of things, and I appreciate how quickly you got there. Uh, no you. problem. That's what we tried to do. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank much. you. Tom Clerk. supplies and expenses. <clears throat> uh, the reason for going up? NADI. So we price motor vehicles every year on our grand list, um, and those folks keep on going up and down every year. So that's the increase that you see there. Any other questions? You have on file the exemptions. Would you know my disability? I wanted to see you. Absolutely. Well, not right really. now. But yeah, so if we're back up and running, we can look it up and see what, uh, if you have a percentage of disability, yes, we can look that up. Some of my guys are asking about that. Tell me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, some of them, yeah, you're right.
we got the bid price of sixty thousand five hundred. It was sixty one thousand, so that's a saving of five hundred dollars. Um, payroll services, you can see, there's an increase of six thousand five hundred, and that's due to the fact we're trying to do time and attendance with ADP. Right now, we process payroll kind of like old school with time cards, and we're trying to get away from that and do digital, so it can be downloaded in the system. It can be real time. You can see on a daily basis who did overtime, what, you know, what the cause of the overtime was, try to manage that a little better. Um, this would help us be able to do that. Because right now, payroll takes two days really to process. Backup, of course, right? Yeah, of course, yes. Oh, backups, of course. Um, a small increase in conference training, that's a GFOA. If I attend a GFOA web uh, seminar, that increased. Uh, computer software decreased about $700. Um, I purchased two new computers this year, so I'm anticipating, obviously, I'm not going to have to do that next year. Um, in that computer software line item, I have AccountMate. That's my software for accounting. That's roughly $2,500 a year. And then supplies and expense, a small increase there. If we hire new employees, et cetera, there's more cost to HR. File folders and all that getting new employees ready, so it's a cost to us. And that's pretty much my budget. So I don't know if you have any questions. Do you see ADP helping in, in any, or like, <clears throat> do you see helping out in any way, shape, or form with uh, productivity, maybe? Yeah. If I'm hoping when I when we can see, like, buy, punch in, punch out, people can then also take their time off digitally so we'll know who's out, who's in. Because right now, everything's paper. So when someone's out, you have to go on the counter, see who's there, who's not. Who's filling in? It's really, you know, that takes a lot of time just managing that and stuff. So hopefully when the ADP comes in, you can just punch in, punch out. Some are red, you can use your phone, you can punch in, punch out. It'll just be better at the ADP. Yeah, because I want to say you probably have like a GPS thing where you got to be yes. here yes. to punch yes. in. Yes, yeah. yep, yep, they have that. Yep. So, so you can keep track of the guys at the highway to from here, right? But, you know, as far as, <laughs> no, as far as punching in, that's all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, right. everyone, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone. Okay. Yeah, every department. So you don't have to wait for time no, cards and stuff right. like that? Yes, yes. Okay. Yep, that would be ideal. Okay. Any other questions? And your name was? Decrease for 
two technically, uh, actually, I'm no, sorry, one uh, new position, a part-time recreation coordinator. Um, we've uh, grown the department uh, significantly over the last year um, in terms of programming. Um, essentially, it was, we've gotten to the point where I can no longer do it all myself, um, so we need that part-time program, uh, program coordinator uh, to help plan, but she also um, uh, instructs several other programs. So um, that is a, uh, you know, an important addition. Uh, the recreation custodian, um, even though it's new to our budget, we've always had a recreation custodian. Um, it just never <laughs> was on the budget for some reason. Um, so it's not really a new position, it's just new to the budget. Um, then we no, there's no increase or decrease for the transportation, um, summer rec transportation. Um, and then what we've done is uh, we've kind of itemized uh, some of the senior related expenses um, a little bit more. Previously, I believe it was kind of all grouped together um, between supplies and So uh, we've now we now have a senior vehicle expense that um, did not change. That's the same. Uh, and then we had a swimming pool and lifeguard. Um, that's only uh, a two percent increase, um, and that that's uh, mainly because um, the minimum wage is increasing to fourteen dollars. Uh, then you'll see pool contracts. So we separated that out from the um, supplies and expenses. Um, just so we can have more accurate reporting. Uh, utilities, $5,000 increase uh, because natural gas and electricity has increased. Uh, and we have um, recreation contracts. Again, we removed that from the supplies and expense line item, line item and made that a separate line item. So um, that is a almost $9,000 uh, those contracts include um, our recreation software, uh, our monthly firewall subscription, uh, our, um, uh, we, we have a monthly uh, pest control um, you know, service. Uh, previously, we, we never had uh, pest control, even though we've had uh, mice issues for years and years and years. So that we had uh, two kitchens. <laughs> Uh, in the building, uh, as well as um, a, uh, a daycare, um, it's pretty important to have uh, you know no mice or rodent problems. So that that's a, a new um, contract for this year. Uh, and for <clears throat> going back to um, kind of separating the senior expenses, um, so the senior expenses include um, we had two part-time staff. Senior program coordinator. Again, she plans a lot of the senior programs, but she also instructs them. And then we have a um, senior. What am I trying to blink on her? Um, but uh, she a social worker. Um, so she essentially works Mondays and Fridays, uh, and she has appointments with seniors uh, for a variety of issues. <coughs> Housing related, it could be food and nutrition related, it could be um, insurance or um, taxes. Essentially, um, she's kind of like a catch all for any um, senior related um, issues. So um, she's an important asset as well. Uh, and that also includes um, our senior transportation driver. So we have a um, transportation service. Um, for seniors uh, to bring them to doctor's appointments, uh, the grocery store, um, uh, really any type of errands that uh, keep them from getting institutionalized. So the, the goal is to keep these seniors at home so that they're able to live independently. Um, so that's kind of the key to this transportation service. So his salary is 
included in that as well. Uh, and lastly, supplies and expenses. Um, that is a 11% uh, increase. Um, the main reason for that increase is uh, because we are taking on more responsibility with uh, the parks and the, um, the athletic fields, um, primarily most of Little League and also playing field of Little League. Um, we, we've made some significant improvements uh, this year, um, but to really keep them up to, to standards, um, it, it's important that we uh, you know, invest a little bit more. Uh, annually to, to keep them up to par. So overall, the department uh, is requesting a 12 percent increase. So. Now, on the senior expenses, you basically listed four other, five other people, personnel. So that's that's encompassing what the senior expenses are. See, senior expenses uh, accounts for three salaries. Three salaries. Yep. So a senior transportation driver, a social worker, and then a senior um, program. Okay, so where did the two part-time staffers come in? Two part-time... Are they back up and up toward the top? Right, so we have a total of five part-time staff. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we, we have, we have a, a part-time recreation coordinator, part-time senior transportation driver, part-time senior program coordinator, and then part-time uh, social worker. So I, I missed both. And um, I know that uh, Jordan has been a big help in helping me with yeah, some of these yes. grants. Do you have any other grants on the horizon that you're looking at? We have a ton. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, I, you know, and, and to Jordan's testament, he said, you know, uh, that we've been awarded like 350,000. I'm right. pretty sure recreation alone has been awarded 350,000 um, because he helps us with our senior grants as well. So not just recreation, but senior. Um, our senior trans transportation driver is part of the uh, through a, uh, a senior grant called Title III. Um, and he's helped us not only reapply for that, but other grants as well. Um, so it, we have uh, several grants um, uh, You're at recreation at Plainfield CT Dot if I send you an email, could you respond with a kind of a list of what you've actually been able to obtain as far as grants and what you have on the horizon? Sure. I think that would be helpful. Sure. Sure. Are there any other questions? I know you had mentioned uh, one of the things that we're, we're kind of upping our game with, which I know is much needed, is the improvements to the Little League yes. as far as facilities and, and such. And I know this is something that Kevin had mentioned, too, of one of the things you want to do. My question is, is has there been any type of communication and is there anything kind of laid out kind of in black and white to make it clear as far as who's responsible for what financially because I know it's changed over the years where there was at one time where some of the costs that we're going to be absorbing on your side right. the Little League did used to, to fund they did you know, right. and, and I know they still fund some of it yep. so I'm just curious if there's again a kind of a clear line there as far as the town will cover these expenses going forward but the Little League is still responsible for you know, whatever they are right not yet because we're Essentially, for the last month, we've been meeting weekly um, to, first off, get the fields ready for play. Um, so we haven't, you know, it, there's nothing black and white yet, but the general rule of thumb is, seeing as the town owns the land, anything that pertains to the maintenance of the land, uh, we will be absorbing, but anything that pertains to, say, like, you know, baseball equipment or baseball jerseys or something like that, they're covering as well. So. Uh, that's why Ron mentioned like we're now doing um, uh, the garbage disposal. So that that pertains to you know the park itself because even though it's mainly Little League, we do have playgrounds there, we have basketball courts there, we have skate parks there. Um, so it is used by other people other than just Little League. Mm -hmm. so. I think it'll be helpful when you eventually do tend yes. to the point where you have it clearly defined because I know people a lot of times will make observations, they'll take pictures, they'll make comments, but they don't necessarily know who to go to. And you know, they can of course by default go to you, but it's quite possible it could pertain to equipment or something that right. not necessarily is going to be covered yep. on the town side, so they can know do I go to the Little League or do I go to the yep. department. Yeah, and, and you know, it, to to Little League it, you know, for, for years and years, um, they they've been very reliant on volunteers. Um, but as we all know, uh, you know, costs have increased mightily, and their their goal is to keep 
um, you know, literally as affordable as possible, so they try not to increase their fees. So they just essentially haven't been able to keep up with the cost of maintenance, and also, you know, all of our times are, are seem to be a little bit more busy, so their volunteer uh, force has kind of dwindled as well. So that's, that's, there's a number of things that kind of contributed to uh, the fields getting to where they are now. Do you have anything to do with the uh, uh, midget football league? Uh, and, and it, it, not, not really. Um, they do actually own that land. Yep. Um, to my knowledge, though, I could be wrong. Do we mow it? Yeah. We used to mow it on a regular basis. We, and they asked us not to do that. We, we mow the outside. We don't mow the field itself. We mow all of the grass yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we don't really have any involvement, but we, we have been reaching out to each youth lead in town to make sure that they know that we're available to help. Because obviously we don't want it to just be little league that's, you know, has the support of the town. We want to make sure that every youth lead has the support of the town. So. Several years ago, or maybe just a few years ago, uh, you had an exercise program. We no longer have that. Is there any reason to do it? Specifically seniors? No, at the uh, senior center. But I'm not sure who was used for exercise program. Yep. Um, uh, let's say equipment. Okay, so exercise equipment. Okay. Um, so and I believe what you're referring to is the equipment that was kind of in the back <laughs> yeah, the entrance of the senior center. So uh, uh, we, we no longer have that equipment. Uh, we we no longer have treadmill, elliptical, um, more of like a stationary things. We do still have the free weights um, and a number of other like smaller fitness equipment. But the reason for getting uh, rid of those pieces of equipment, main thing is liability. Um, uh, we don't, the, the senior side of the building is not staffed 24-7 um, or, or even while the building is open. Um, so there are times throughout the day, pretty much from, I'd say, 1 to 4.30, uh, when the building is open to the public and there's not a single staff member on that side of the building. Um, because, as I mentioned, we only have part-time senior staff, so they, they typically leave by 12 or 1 o'clock. So uh, there, there's a very real possibility where someone could have came in, used the equipment at 2 o'clock, and then you know, I go down to the other side of the building at 4.30, and unfortunately that person had some type of medical emergency. Um, so just from a liability standpoint, it was, it was too much. That and also maintenance. Um, that equipment has been around for a very long time, um, and it's, it was outdated. Uh, plus, I believe the town would be liable for making sure that it's safe to use. So, uh, additional cost to upkeep. So. Did you mention that the, uh, the pool contracts and the other contracts were originally what part of the supplies and expenses? Yes, yeah, there, there were a lot of things that were grouped together. Yeah. Um, off the top of my head, I, I don't remember specifically what was grouped together, but yes, a, a lot was in the supplies and expenses. So like in the current year, we had like 50 grand and some change. Mm -hmm. So you got about, what, 15,000 15, there. So the actual supply would be like 35 grand, like that. For the pool alone? Well, no, supplies and expenses. Yep. So if you get the 56, your actual supplies and expenses should be down in the 30s. Because if you took, well, I think what you're saying is that is that if you took it from one, you're saying you want to be more transparent and, and follow it. Right. If it is, if, if this year, right, is 50,453, then if you removed it from that budget and you know put them under their own, then why is it still so high? Why right. didn't it go down? Okay, I, I do have it broken down, so I, I can I can go through it. So. Um, Seven thousand eight hundred dollars for a copier. Uh, that's our that's our least copier mm -hmm. that, that we have. Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars for office paper. Six hundred dollars for office supplies. So that's receipt books, labels, envelopes, binders, uh, etc. Um, Eight thousand five hundred dollars for direct mailing. So that is something new this year. Essentially, um, we uh, we do a great job of targeting the people that. Come frequently to our program or come to our um, 
community center, but for someone who doesn't, there, there's a lot of people in town that don't even know that we have a senior center or a community center. Um, so what we plan on doing is essentially direct uh, door mailings four times a year um, to make people aware of our pool, our programs, our community center. Um, so that is something new. Uh, but did you have these last year? Not all. So it, it, like I said, the direct mailing is new. Um, and that was how much? 8,500? Yes. And then I, if you want, I could just skip to the new items. So a uh, big ticket form, if you will, is 20,000 for park maintenance. Which for what? Park, park maintenance. So that's all, all okay. Right. The, the little leagues. Right, exactly. Yep. I see. Or other parks. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. so my park. Wow. Do you know we have a spot on Evergreen Cemetery? Evergreen Cemetery. Uh, Unity Road, I should say. We have a park there. Where the, where the flag is by the highway garage. Yep. Okay. Yeah, a big flag with a small bar. So, we don't maintain that. Uh, right, and I guess that's it gets a tricky over. situation. It, it, I'm not sure if that's building or grounds or if that's recreation. You know, uh, I think, is it, is it considered like a better park? Uh, no, it's just a tenery. I don't know the name. I don't think it's ever been named, but the plaque uh, uh, the stone says just a tenery. Uh, 1699 uh, to 1999. And then on the back of the stone, uh, which, uh, yeah, they came up from the, uh, yep. the Education Association High School stone and said the various Boy Scouts and you can hardly read it. Right. Uh, Rotary went up there this past weekend and did a pretty good job. Okay. But the back side of that stone you still can't read it. Right, right. So that's definitely something that, you know, this new money can be used for. Uh, it, it, essentially, that's why we call it parks maintenance, because any open space or any park that we have in town, this money can go for uh, I know last year, uh, Kevin used some money to clean up the tank. <coughs> park the park. So. Uh, one last question. Uh, I've been around for quite a while, and I, mean, I guess, I don't know if you have different, but uh, it seems like you've got a lot more programs than I have. Thank you. Because I can't remember them all. Do you have some kind of a brochure that I could tell yeah. everything you do? Yeah, we, we have a seasonal brochure um, every season. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, we have our website, um, uh, but, you know, and, and 